Good morning. We've been looking at the roll call of witnesses to the resurrection, and now we're going to turn to the witness of John. John, the writer himself. It's a different kind of a witness here, uh, but it's almost like you might say subtext, but there's something to say here. So we pray, Lord, that we might hear what you have to say to us through this witness to the resurrection, that we might learn how to live in it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So John comes under the designation of the one whom Jesus loved, which is lovely and tender. It's also a necessary humility because John is telling his own story, but he doesn't want himself to focus too largely in the narrative. So he gives himself this title and it's as if he's pulling back from the main action. But he's there in the main action right at the beginning of the week, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She saw that the stone had gone, so she ran to Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. So that's John. And John is there. John is there right at the beginning. He's been there at the cross. He's been with with, with Mary, the mother of Jesus. He's, he's as close as close can be, the only one that hasn't run for his life and hidden. And here he is on the first day of the week at the tomb. And they start for the tomb. And it says the other disciple, and that's John himself, was quicker. He was quicker on his feet and he was quicker on his uptake. He saw something. It says he bent over. He hung back a bit. He looked at the strips of linen and he looked at the headpiece. And he finally goes inside. And in verse eight, it says he saw and believed. But just do you think that he's just gone right up to the top? It says, but they, Peter and John, still did not understand that Jesus had to rise from the dead. So there's more to go. There's further to understand. There's further to receive. So that's scene one. Then scene two, he's with the other disciples when Jesus stands among them and Jesus breathes on them. Peace to you. They're filled with joy and he sends them out in, in it with a message of forgiveness, peace, joy, forgiveness. So John's there. John's there for that. But there's something else to be said. So just as Peter needed a little bit of extra personal attention in this narrative, so did John. It's a very, very interesting bit. So this, this comes in now. We're going to move to chapter 21. So he's already seen. He's already seen the risen Christ. He's already believed. He's already been overjoyed and filled with peace and joy and the message of forgiveness. And now he witnesses. He goes back to Galilee. He goes fishing with Peter. He recognizes that this man on the shore is Jesus. It is the Lord. Peter responds, dives into the water, wades back the hundred yards across the surf to to Jesus where the, the barbecue is waiting. And Jesus has this quiet conversation to reinstate Peter. But then at the end of that, verse 20, Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Now, Jesus has just given Peter a word that the day will come when you'll go where you, you don't want to go. The day will come when they lead you where you, would, you don't want to go. But I'm calling you to follow me. And so Peter says, OK, but what about him? It's, like it's so interesting that God deals with us according to our story. And he deals like Thomas, like Mary Magdalene, like Peter, and now like John himself. He deals with us so specifically as if his future for us is specifically designed to work with our past and our personality and our character. It's so wonderful, so wonderful. And... What's happening here is that we're being brought into the new generation, 
this is moving away now from from the story of Jesus and the risen Jesus to the story of John's life. And John was the last of the disciples to die. He saw all of that happening. It's like, imagine that this whole sort of the story of the book of Acts, and he's he's out of it. He's he's followed it. He's he's looked after Mary, the mother of Jesus. He, he things have moved on. In fact, there came to be an account. There came to be a theory about John that he was going to stay until the Lord returned. And that is the story that John is coming against now. Remember that this wasn't written on the spot. This was written after reflection from years and years later. We generally think that Mark was the first gospel. That might have had some background in the 40s and 50s. Even that is like 20 years after the events. But this might be even 40 years after the event. And you're looking back and you're saying, but John's still alive. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm still alive. But, you know, Jesus said about this, he said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple, John, would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? So John is specifically encountering, encountering something that had been said about him that he was like the i suppose the grand old man of the christian church in the first century said so this is john john was with jesus he said yeah but don't make don't make a magic trick out of this my my role is to follow jesus just like peter's was and this is the disciple who testifies to these things who wrote them down and we know that his testimony is true and then he finishes the very last verse of the bible Jesus did many other things. If every one of them were written down, I don't suppose the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Well, we're working on it. <laughs> There's like a million books, a whole ocean of ink, a whole forest of trees. But Lord, we pray. Because Lord, we see ourselves here. We acknowledge that we are disciples, that we're drawn into the story. We're filled with joy that you've risen again. We're filled with peace that you're in our hearts and we're given your wonderful word of forgiveness teach us lord to be people of mercy and forgiveness and grace wherever we go and whatever our story help us not to compare it to somebody else's story to just put you first to follow and to do your will we pray in jesus name amen amen god bless you today